Our story this afternoon is entitled Footprints Without Feet. You will also realize that this is the title of our book. Usually a collection of short stories will have a fancy title and usually that title will be the title of the most interesting short story in the entire collection. And so today we are going to read a very, very interesting story, Footprints Without Feet. The two boys, <coughs> the two boys stared, started in surprise. They were startled. They gave a sudden body jerk because they were surprised. They started in surprise at the fresh, muddy imprints of a pair of bare feet. What was a barefooted man doing on the steps of a house in the middle of London? And where was the man? As they gazed, a remarkable sight met their eyes. A fresh footmark appeared from nowhere. In front of their eyes, another footmark came. Further footprints followed, one after another, descending, going down the steps and progressing down the street. The boys followed, fascinated, deeply interested. They were entranced, they were mesmerized until the muddy impression became fainter and fainter and at last disappeared altogether. The explanation of the mystery was really simple enough. The bewildered boys, the puzzled boys had been following a scientist who had just discovered how to make the human body transparent. Griffin, the scientist, had carried out experiment after experiment to prove that the human body could become invisible. Finally, he swallowed certain red drugs and his body became as transparent as a sheet of glass, although it also remained as solid as glass. It was transparent like glass, it was also solid like glass. Brilliant scientist though he was, Griffin was rather a lawless person, a fellow who was, had no respect for the law, who did not want to obey the law at all. His landlord disliked him and tried to eject him, tried to evict him. When you try to push someone out of a place, you say evict. You eject something from your CPU or something from your music player. But when you move someone out, you can eject him, but a better word is eject or evict, sorry. In revenge, Griffin set fire to the house. To get away without being seen, he had to remove his clothes. <coughs> Thus it was. In this way, <coughs> he became a homeless wanderer without clothes, without money, and quite invisible until he happened to step in some mud and he left footprints as he walked. He escaped easily enough from the boys who had followed his footprints in London. But his adventures were by no means over. He had chosen a bad time of the year to wander about London without clothes. It was midwinter. The air was bitterly cold and he could not do without clothes. Instead of walking about the streets, he decided to slip into a big London store for warmth. Remember, in Europe and in America, even in Singapore and other parts of Asia, most big shops, most big stores are centrally air conditioned, which means in summer it is cool and in winter it is warm. 
to their central heating, they call it. Closing time arrived. And as soon as the doors were shut, Griffin was able to give himself the pleasure of clothing and feeding himself without regard to expense. When the shop closed, he could eat as much as he wanted, wear as many clothes as he wanted, without worrying about the cost, without any regard for expense. He broke open boxes and wrappers and fitted himself out with warm clothes. Fitted himself out. So that is why sometimes tailors are called outfitters. Soon, with shoes and overcoat and a white brim hat, he became a fully dressed and visible person. In the kitchen of the restaurant, he found cold meat and coffee, and he followed up the meal with sweets and wine taken from the grocery store. Finally, he settled down to sleep on a pile of quilts. <laughs>